Blender's mission is to get the best 3D graphics tools into the hands of artists all over the world completely for free. It can do that thanks to the fact that it's open source, meaning that anybody can use it for any reason and can also contribute to improving it. But it's not just volunteers and academics that add features. They also have plenty of full-time developers thanks to the thousands of people and some of the biggest tech companies donating every single month. So if that many people have decided to give Blender money even though they don't have to in order to use it, you can bet that it's a pretty exciting piece of software. So it's definitely worth learning. I'm Jonathan Lampel with cgcookie.com and you're watching the Blender Basics. Now, before we open up Blender, it might be helpful to know exactly what it is that we're getting into here. Because the world of 3D design is incredibly broad, ranging from the entertainment side of things with video games and visual effects and animated films, all the way to the industrial sector with their 3D printing and prototyping and scientific simulations. Whether you know it or not, 3D is used to some degree or another in a really wide range of industries. Blender is pretty unique here because it has an incredible amount of features built in. It's sort of like a jack of all trades and master of one or two. I'd say its greatest strength though is probably 3D modeling. You can build things in Blender incredibly quickly using mesh editing tools combined with powerful modifiers and procedural nodes. You can also make 3D shapes in Blender by sculpting, which can be used to make more organic forms from stylized animals all the way up to fully realistic human characters. Once you have your 3D shapes, Blender has lots of tools for rigging and animation so that you can bring your creations to life. If you'd like, you can even add physics like particles, cloth, liquids, smoke, and all of that fun stuff. What's pretty unique to Blender is that there's also a full-blown 2D animation system built in that can be used right alongside the 3D tools for some pretty sweet effects. Of course, you don't want your objects to be totally gray most of the time, and Blender has a pretty powerful material editor for changing how your objects look and react to light. You can either use built-in patterns or paint your own textures, use textures from another software or from the web, or combine them all together in whatever way that you want. When it comes time to show off your work, Blender has two awesome render engines that you can choose from to convert your 3D scene to an image or movie. Cycles, which is a full-on path tracer that simulates light very realistically, and Eevee, which is a real-time renderer like you would find in a game engine. Afterwards, you can use the compositor to add effects on top of your image, which, when combined with the surprisingly robust built-in camera tracker and some footage, can produce some really cool visual effects shots. Blender even has a basic video editor for slicing up rendered clips and putting them together to make a movie. If you need to, you can even write Python scripts directly in Blender and automate repetitive tasks and add new functionality, or use add-ons that other people in Blender's massive community have made to make their lives easier. Suffice it to say, there's a lot that you can do in Blender, but because it's so open-ended and flexible, if you're new to 3D, it's probably not like any other software that you're used to, so it will take time to learn. The downside of having total creative freedom like this is that there's not much hand-holding. You're totally free to create some pretty incredible things, but you're also totally free to mess it up anywhere along the way, and I've done that a lot. It just takes time and practice to get the hang of it. I've been using Blender for over 10 years at this point, and I still learn new things every day, so don't expect to master it right away or get instant results. That said, the best thing about it is that you don't have to be an expert to start making cool stuff. You can start doing that today. You don't have to know how to draw, you don't have to know how to code, though those things might be helpful for you at some point, you just need a little bit of patience to learn the tools, and that excited curiosity that just comes with having fun making something creative. If you can manage that, then you're all set. Some really creative things can be made with just the bare minimum basics, and I've seen it happen. So my job here is to get you up and running with Blender as quickly as possible. CGCookie.com is a Blender training site, and we've been teaching 3D since the days of physically mailing people DVDs so that they could get the video files. So we've seen what works and what doesn't when it comes to teaching computer graphics. First off, there are a ton of video tutorials that you can find for free on YouTube, and I'd really encourage you to watch them. A lot of them are super fun, and there's a huge range of creators, so you're sure to find some good ones that you like. What cgcookie.com offers, though, is a little bit different from that, because instead of somewhat random tutorials here or there that may or may not include what you should be learning at your skill level, you're getting a structured set of larger courses broken down by topic that will guide you step by step through everything you need to know to learn Blender. So instead of just showing you what buttons to press to create one specific result, we want to teach you the fundamentals of 3D graphics in general, so that you can create whatever it is that's in your imagination, and hopefully, at the end, not need tutorials. Now, our courses are often pretty informationally dense, because we want everyone to get as much out of them as possible. But I know it can be a little bit overwhelming to learn a bunch of new terminology and new concepts all at once. So don't feel like you have to speed through these videos and master everything on the first try, because that's usually not how it works. Instead, you might find that you learn a little bit faster in the long run by taking your time with these. Maybe watch the video one time through to get a good overview of it, 
and then go through it a second time while following it along. If you feel like you totally understand a lesson even after just watching it once on two times speed, then that's awesome. But if you don't feel like you totally get it even after taking it slow, then don't worry. Try taking a bit of a break and coming back to it with fresh eyes. That usually helps. Watch the video again and continue following along until you feel comfortable with it. Some of these ideas are just going to take longer to stick than others, but which ones is totally different for every person. So go at your own pace. You'll get more and more familiar with these things as we go along, and before you know it, it'll feel like second nature. But it will take some repetition and practice in order to get there. Now, when it comes to these videos in particular, you're more than welcome to watch them on our YouTube channel. But if you do want to sign up to our site to see all of our other courses, it'll track your progress as you go and let you ask the instructors questions on any lesson. It might be a good idea to check the question section below a lesson to see if somebody else already got an answer to the same thing that you were wondering. You can even submit exercises and get feedback. We have a whole community of artists that are learning alongside you, so don't hesitate to start a forum thread documenting your progress or asking for feedback. You're also more than welcome to join our Discord. Alright, so that's what we do, but now let's go ahead and download Blender. All you need to do is head to blender.org and click download Blender. It'll automatically detect what system you're downloading it for, and you can download it here or you can choose any other type of installer. If you want, you can install previous versions of Blender up here at the top, and go to Download. Or if you're really adventurous on the download page, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and check out some of the experimental builds. But if you're just starting out in Blender, I would recommend just going ahead and downloading whatever the official build is on the download page. The very first time you open up a new version of Blender, you'll be greeted with this splash screen that has a bunch of settings that you can change right off the bat. Now the picture might be slightly different depending on what version you're using. Right now I'm using 3.0 beta, but you might be using something a little bit later, but that's fine, everything else should be the same. The language is the only thing that you might want to change here, because by default it's set to English, and if you're not comfortable with English, then you might want to change it to one of these others. However, all of the CG Cookie courses are in English, so it might make it a little bit easier to follow along if you do stick with that. I would really recommend leaving all of the rest of these at their defaults, just because it'll make it easier to follow along with the tutorials. If you want to go through and change your shortcuts or customize your theme once you're a little bit more comfortable with Blender, I would encourage you to go through and do that. But again, if you're just starting out, I would really recommend leaving everything at the default and using it the way that it comes out of the box. So with that, let's just click Save New Settings, and then we'll get the regular splash screen that's going to come up every time that we open up Blender. From here, we can start a bunch of different types of projects, which we'll look at in a little bit. We can open a file or recover from a crash, or you can do things like look at the Blender manual, check out the Blender website, see what's new in the release notes, or donate to the development fund. The way to get past the splash screen is just to click literally anywhere except on any of these links. So just click off the side or on the picture, it'll disappear, and you'll be up and running with a new file in Blender. It's probably one of the fastest loading graphics softwares I have ever used. Now if it looks like there's a lot going on, don't worry, we'll break down the interface in the next video. I realize that everything might be a little bit hard to see on the video though, and depending on your monitor size, things might look a little bit too big or a little bit too small. So the first thing that I'll do is go to Edit and Preferences, and under Display, under the Interface Options, we have a Resolution Scale. I'm just going to bump this up to 1.3, just so that everything's a little bit bigger and it's easier for you to read the text in the video, but go ahead and change that to whatever you're comfortable with. The one other thing that I will change from the defaults, which you definitely do not need to do, is I installed a plugin called Screencast Keys, and if you're super curious, you can find it on GitHub, but again, you definitely don't need to install this. This is just a visual thing that will help you follow along with these tutorials. So what this does is if I click anywhere around the interface or just press any button, type any key, that's going to show up in the bottom right of my screen here. I'll definitely be saying what I'm doing as I'm going along, but if for whatever reason I misspeak or forget to say something, this is always just a good visual backup so you always know exactly what I'm doing. So your only homework for this video is to get Blender sized appropriately for your screen, and just remember that's in Edit and Preferences, under Interface and Resolution Scale. Once it's comfortable to look at, then let's head over to the next video and we'll explore the interface.